My name is Barbara the Welder and I'm an art ambassador for Diamond Farrier. Today's project that I'm going to show you how to make is a coat rack that is in the shape of a moose head. Uh, it's one of my favorite horseshoe projects. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's something that, uh, that you can use in a kid's bedroom or uh, in a hunting camp. It looks great there also. So to get started, the materials you're going to need are um, nine horseshoes. I'm using the classic one. You can use any size uh, horseshoe for it. Because it's art, you, uh, you can make it larger or smaller depending on what size horseshoes you have. In addition to the horseshoes, you're going to need a welder. I'm using a MIG welder uh, to do mine, but you can MIG, TIG, or stick weld um, the, the coat rack. Uh, you will also need a angle grinder. I am using um, with a cutoff wheel, um, or if you have a different way to uh, plasma cutter, you want to cut the horseshoes in half. You're going to need to be able to cut the horseshoes, so you're going to need that capability. Um, I have a vice grip clamp that I use to clamp the horseshoes down for me to um, for me to cut them. Uh, I prefer to finish my projects. This is a Rust Oleum clear coat. Um, you can pick it up at uh, most any hardware store. Um, I use that to clear coat my projects when I'm done. The horseshoes are steel, they will rust, so I like to do that clear coat afterwards. It gives the metal a really nice patina, and to top it off, it'll keep it from rusting. So, uh, the last, uh, last thing I need is two washers uh, to use for eyes for your moose. All right, let's get started. All right, your first step is gonna to be to take three of your horseshoes and mark them right down the center. And this is going to give you a cut line. Right there. That's gonna give you a cut line. And we're gonna cut all three of those horseshoes apart. We are gonna use five of the six halves of those horseshoes. So when I do any kind of cutting, safety glasses and hearing protection, you get one set of ears and one set of eyes. I love mine, I want them to be where they belong and working the way they're supposed to be working. So let's go ahead and get our safety gear on and we will get, uh, get to cutting these off. I've got my first one already here on the bench and we are going to uh, get it clamped down and I'm going to give it a cut. You're going to go right ahead and cut both of the, uh, the other two, cut them uh, also. All right, now that we have our three horseshoes cut in half, and we've set the one half side a piece we didn't need, we have five half pieces that we are going to kind of set aside for now in front of us. Um, our next step will be to take the remaining horseshoes and we're going to lay them out. The first one we're going to make, we're going to set them end to end. Just like this, flat on the bench. And this is going to be the moose's head. So we're gonna lay them like that. Our next piece is we're gonna slowly take each horseshoe and we're gonna put two on each side of the head. And the number I give you is for how I make this. If you get a bigger family or a whole ton of stuff that, uh, that you need to hang off, backpacks and, and, uh, and jackets and whatnot. You can go ahead and use three horseshoes on either side if you want to. I use two horseshoes on either side, but uh, I don't have a whole ton of stuff that, uh, that I hang up. So welding caps, I hang up welding caps. So what they are is I've got them staggered on either side of the head to make them look like antlers. I use the holes in the horseshoes to help me line them up and to make sure that they are consistent. Um, it's art, it doesn't have to be consistent. You can play around with it. Just make it how you like it and you know, put it in the way that, uh, that you're happy with it. So I got my layout. I am going to get it tacked up. 
All right, now that we have the layout the way we want it, what we're gonna do is tack each horseshoe to the one that it touches. It's just a small weld that will allow us to make sure that it stays where it's supposed to be and that we like how it's laid out. And once we're done tacking it and checking the whole thing, then we'll go ahead and weld everything together. Alright, it's lightly tacked. I have just a small tack in each spot. It's flat to the table. I like how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do, I'm going to weld one line at each spot just to get it to, uh, to weld it uh, together. Because I want it to be sturdy, I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to hit it off the table to make sure it's welded right, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld the back, same spot on, um, on each horseshoe. go one moose head getting uh, getting welded up our next step is going to go ahead and be to weld the eyes on and it's as simple as this you're gonna have one one washer on each side and I think in order to make sure it's right I'm Flipping it over to make sure that I'm looking at it uh, face to face so that he's exactly how I want it. Otherwise I'm going to end up with a googly eyed moose. So get your, uh, get your washers set where you want them. And go ahead and put a tack weld on either one. Make sure that you like it and if you like where they're set up go ahead and weld it. If you don't like where you set it up, take a small hammer and you can hit them, like move them around. That's the idea of having that tack weld is so that you are not, uh, you're not 100% committed to where that piece is if you don't like it once you uh, take a look at it from a different angle. All right, I like how that is, so I'm gonna put just a very small weld down either side and then I'm gonna get it again on the back to make sure that it is uh, secure and it's not gonna just pop off if you hit it from one side. Now, to make this functional, what we need to do next is our half pieces are going to be our hooks. So each, each antler is going to get one hook on it, and then down here on his, it'll give him a nose, but it'll also be a hook. So what you're going to do is we're just going to eyeball this. Uh, if you're not happy eyeballing something, uh, just you can use a, um, a square and find the center, but... Uh, I think with it just being it's like this, it's eyeball. So I'm looking at this tip here, and I'm looking at the distance between here, almost like I'm sighting a gun, and then centering it 
on the base of the horseshoe. So I'm going to tack just the back side here. That way I can adjust it left and right if I need to or side to side. So just do the one tack on the back. I'll be darned. Normally it's not that easy. <laughs> they actually come out pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the front of it also. I'm going to tack this front. And that should stay. Did I get it? Yes, I got it. So same thing all the way across each antler. You're going to put a hook. And you're going to do the same thing. Tack the back, check it, and then tack the front. That one can move just a little bit. See if I can do this without knocking this off of here. There we go. All right, lined up where I want it. Now I'm going to take it. I'm just going to tack the front. All right. Next piece. Same thing. like where that one is, so I'm just going to tack the front, and last piece on the antler, get it lined up, I'm actually, I can use the marks, uh, diamond is stamped right here on this horseshoe, and honestly for art, I would, I'm sure they didn't think of this, I don't know. Maybe they did. I can use those uh, that diamond stamp on there to uh, to line it up, and that's what's made it easier for me to uh, to line each of these hooks up. Is it uh, just center it right on that diamond? All right, I like the front, oh, and I'm hooked. There we go. All right, and our last piece is going to be tack welded right on the nose. Same thing, center. Center that piece on there. Eyeball it, make sure that you're straight. Also, as you're going, you want to make sure side to side that it's not leaning way to the left or to the right so that uh, you don't have it all cattywampus. Okay. All right, I like how that looks. Okay. Now, sometimes as you're doing these projects, uh, you're sitting right here on top of the table, uh, right on top of your project, and you're looking at it close up. It might help if you take it and set it up against a wall. Be careful uh, while you're doing it because these are light tacks. This is not like the, the end of it. Um, I just sometimes I like to get a different perspective. It might look good like this, but you get it uh, set up on a wall and you've got it all jacked all over the place. So now that you've got it on there, you've got everything tacked where you like. We're going to run one bead down each side of these uh, of these hooks. So go ahead and do that. got him welded up and we're ready for the next step. All right, your next step is to do cleanup. Uh, what I neglected to mention in the beginning was that you're going to need a wire brush and hammer and chisel. I know, Barbie, you're a slacker. So I always use my safety glasses when I'm um, chiseling any slag off or using a wire brush. Again, it's, um, I'm a safety girl. I love my eyes and I've had stuff um, pop up on me. Uh, especially, especially the spatter. So 
you know, I, I wear my glasses, I hope you are too. Uh, public safety announcement over. Um, take your wire brush and you're gonna clean each well just by getting in. Let's turn this sideways so you can see. Just getting in here. You wanna you wanna clean any discoloration off of each spot. And you also, as you're doing that, you wanna look for weld spatter. Uh, the weld spatter is just small dots of weld that has gotten onto your project. If you are using a TIG welder, you shouldn't have it otherwise. Get a hold of me and I'll help you set it up right. Um, with a MIG, uh, set up your machine right. The better your machine is set up for the material that you're using, the less spatter you're gonna have. Chances are that you will have some spatter, but uh, you wanna do your best to set up the machine right so that you don't have it. So once you get done with cleaning up the weld spatter, or with the, the weld coloration, take your hammer and your chisel and you're gonna wanna chip away any of that uh, spatter. It should come off pretty easy hopefully. Um, just make sure you go over the whole project. Uh, the idea is one, it looks better when you've got it all cleaned up, but the most important thing is the fact that no one's going to get hurt handling it. You've got people that are going to be using this, and if they're using it, then they're brushing up against it. That wild spider, it could cut people, and you don't want to do that with your art. Um, so the, the last step is the, that clear coat I told you guys about. I don't know if there's other brands. I'm sure there are. There's usually, but uh, that's what I use, the Rust-Oleum Clear Coat. You can get it at, um, at any hardware store. I love it. Uh, everything that uh, comes out of my shop that, uh, that is steel gets clear coated. It just prevents it from, uh, from rusting. Um, so, yeah, it, it's to prevent it from rusting, but it also gives it that, uh, that nice, uh, nice finish gives a good patina on the metal. It kind of pulls the color out of the metal, which is neat and it gives it a little bit of depth. All right, there is the final project. Here is our moose head coat rack, perfect for hanging up hats and coats and whatever else that uh, that you guys uh, see fit. Welding caps. I hang my welding caps on mine. Uh, if you guys really enjoyed this project. Uh, I have several other projects that I create uh, using horseshoes on my YouTube channel. I uh, also have a book coming out August 1st, uh, Horseshoe Crafts, 30 projects that you can make at home. Uh, just like this, I take you step by step through each project. Uh, I've taken a ton of pictures at each step to help you uh, to craft, uh, craft all kinds of stuff that uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy, how to make letters. Uh, candle holders, wine racks, uh, bookends, you name it. Uh, it's, if you name it, it's ma been made out of horseshoes, there's a dang good chance it's in that book. So I appreciate very much you guys uh, checking out my video. And uh, you get a chance, stop over to Instagram and YouTube and check out, uh, or Instagram and Facebook and check out Barbie the Welder. I, will, uh, I hope to see you guys there and connect with you. Send me pictures of your projects, guys. I'd love to see what you guys create. Thank you so much.